We only hire potatoes to play potato roles. Hey, welcome back to Flannel Farms. Today we're working on getting our potatoes in the ground. It's about the last week of July. We've sprouted some potatoes already and we're gonna get them in the ground. Now, if you guys have been watching the channel, you know we have very hard ground. And it is very hot today. As you can tell that I have my safari hat and my shorty shorts on. So we're gonna do some work. Now we have a place that we've picked where we already have run the chickens through it and it's not too far from our other potato patch. But our ground is incredibly hard. So I'm gonna be using my tractor. If you don't have a tractor, there's a couple other ways that you can get hard ground to cooperate. You can use a pickaxe, you can use a regular axe, you can use a shovel, you can use a trowel, you could use a hammer, you could use a knife, a saw, a stick, a grinder. Really, just about anything that gets through dirt. I mean, dynamite if you have to. But since I own a tractor, we're gonna use that. So what our plan is, is we're gonna take the tractor, scoop out a bit of a trench, and then we're going to lay down some grass clippings. We went and bought a mower that had a bag on it just so we could get grass clippings. Used, of course. Don't buy anything new unless you have to. So we're gonna do a bed, probably dig down four inches or so with the tractor. Small bed of grass clippings, put the dirt back on top, and then cover that with mulch. We have a boatload, that's a tractor. We have a boatload of mulch that we got from the local power company that has been trimming their trees. And we're gonna use the mulch for our mounds because we've had good success with that. We've already run chickens through here. And what we're trying to do is rebuild the soil in any way that we can. Of course, a lot of the chicken poop isn't the stuff I just scraped. So we're hoping that actually by tilling this stuff in to a pretty well dead soil anyways, we're gonna add life deeper. Killing has its place. Now this isn't necessary. If you're, if you wanted to, you could put your potatoes right on kind of the dirt, just the hard packed dirt, and spread this over the top of it, the mulch, or grass clippings, or whatever you have. The other thing you could do is the year before make a bed of grass clippings or mulch, leaves, it doesn't matter, and essentially turn an area into a compost bed and then plant your potatoes there the next year. We haven't been here long enough for all that and I want potatoes. So this is what we are doing. One of the hard things about gardening is nearly everybody's situation is somewhat different. Unless you live next door to me. And even then, it depends on what your yard was used for or your ground. So we are just going to set the potatoes right on this nice soft mess and then bury it with a sprinkling of top dirt from here and some old hay. So there is actually quite a lot in here. Okay. But not everything has eyes. Not so everything has eyes. I figure instead The hills of, have eyes. We should maybe do, um, just plant everything close. 
Yeah. And whatever comes up, comes up. Yeah. And I pulled some of our seed potatoes from before and they're sprouting again. Okay. You use those? Yeah. Might as well. We ran into a bit of an issue because nobody had seed potatoes. So our potatoes, we probably should have tried to start, what, three weeks ago maybe, instead of last week? We've it's never like tried a cold season potato. Warm season. But it's... Yes, sorry. Yeah. We've never tried to plant a potato in the warm season. Yeah. We do know, as evidenced by our previous video, growing in hay and straw works. So we're going to try and apply that to a warm season. Even We're planting this in July, but if it works, they'll be harvested in the fall. These are just the mounds. So. We're going to put them in the middle. Okay. We're basically building our own hills. We'll right. see, we'll see. If at first you don't succeed, cry, cry again. I mean, try, try again. <laughs> Yell, scream. Yes. So these are the from our other seed potatoes, is that right? Or is that a new one? Um, that came out of a bag of potatoes, I think. Okay. The ones that were from the old... This is... This is from a seed potato before. But I it's found... It's growing again. Yeah, you see so. the green. We'll put it back, see what happens. And that's growing in July, so that was just sitting out in the old past, the old... Uh, well, somebody had said, I, I forget who, you'll forgive me, in the comments that they waited until their vines or plants died completely. Yes. And we were already having these sprout again. Yes. The, the potatoes that were growing on them were growing, so... It wasn't even the seed potatoes re-sprouting. It was new potatoes that grew on the plant were sprouting. Yes. About that far apart, you think? You do want to be careful with wood chips, as my buddy Bill has pointed out in the past, that wood chips, as they're breaking down, actually steal nitrogen. It helps the breakdown process. Yes. Once they're broken down, they're great. But if you use too much too soon, or have a bed made of just mulch, it can steal all the nitrogen. So wood just chip mulch. Wood chip mulch, yes. Not hay, straw, grass. So just be careful with wood chips. Right, actually, because that was really tight planting. Yeah, you got them all? All of them. All right. Perfect. So we planted them a little tighter because we're actually not sure how well this is going to work. So the strong plants that come up, we will keep. And the ones that don't come up, it won't matter. And whatever weaklings, we're just going to pull out. So if it looks like we're trying to pave the road with potatoes, that's why. Also, it's my garden. <laughs> <laughs> you do it the way you want it in your garden. Because you can do everything you see on the internet and it still not work because your garden is slightly different. Or the rains weren't enough. Or you didn't have enough fish emulsion. Or whatever. And actually, speaking of fish emulsion, we realized a little, well, not, not too late. We knew how important it was. I did, I just didn't have enough. We did not prioritize it because we didn't know where you could get fish for inexpensive to free. We asked friends. I even have a buddy with a charter business that I tried to rope in. And almost by happenstance, one of our neighbors invited us to go fishing at a public area right down the road which in country terms means literally the county line. <laughs> just, across, the just across the street, seven and a half miles away on the border. Anyways, so we actually went and got a fishing license after we saw how much success they were having. And we've got, what, 15 fish in a barrel right now? Yeah. So we will have fish emulsion. It doesn't do any good to kill yourself doing three quarters of something to be successful. If it won't make you successful the rest of the way, so. We realized that we needed a weekly application of fish emulsion. I gave a dose to my, uh, my plants that were struggling with squash bugs, that and soapy water. Yeah. And almost the next day, everything looked much happier. Yep. So. It, it really saved the crop. I think it did. So. I don't know what may or may not be missing from your ground. It might have nothing to do with fish emulsion. It might have nothing to do with hard ground. It might have to do with potato beetles. 
Not enough water. Too much water. Not enough sun. Too much sun. Too much sun. Too hot. Too cold. One of the beautifully frustrating things about planting could be could be almost anything that's wrong. So anyhow. Troubleshoot. Yeah. And when you get a harvest that is a certain way, I don't even know if you can see me. Hello, hello, Keith. Cowboy, this hair's for you. Uh, when you see what goes wrong, typically there's some Yahoo on the internet that says, I had trouble with my potatoes like this. And they'll tell you more than likely what your problem is. And we did some of that investigating too. And we found out that the fish emulsion actually is like a pesticide in and of itself. It helps the plant recover quicker and gets rid of it. So who knows? It's almost like uh, an Im immune system booster for the plant. It's ginkgo biloba for your plant. Echinacea. Echinacea. St. John's wort. Mm, healing crystals and positive energy. Wait, that's, nope, never mind. <laughs> I believe in science. Probably unload the rest of the straw and just put it over here. Okay. So it's here. Okay. And then hope for the best. And hope for the best. But that's boring, unloading straw. So we're not going to show it to you. Although, if you stay tuned past this part, Professor Pending, there will be more just for you specifically. So, thanks for joining us today. I hope you like this video. Then I hope you actually hit the button and like the video. And even if you don't like the video, I hope you actually hit the button and like the video. It's not immoral to hit the like button even if you don't like it. It's because it... it, it please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Grow as you grow. We'll see you next time. Some of you are wondering why after we've already said like and subscribe grow and you grow and all that that you're still seeing long form planting it's because one of our buddies and subscribers professor pending uh, was disappointed in how quickly our harvest video went by he said he could have watched more harvesting i don't know if he could watch more planting but professor pending this is for you <laughs> Barely edited, unplanned, raw footage. We grow organic and we film organic. <laughs> <laughs> In order to save the environment, we don't actually use film, we use a memory card. We only hire potatoes to play potato roles. All right, actually, because that was really tight planting. Yeah, you got them all? All of them. All right. Perfect. So we planted them a little tighter because we're actually not sure how well this is going to work. So the strong plants that come up, we will keep. And the ones that don't come up, it won't matter. And whatever weaklings, we're just going to pull out. So if it looks like we're trying to pave the road with potatoes, that's why. Also, it's my garden. <laughs> <laughs> you do it the way you want it in your garden. Probably throw some straw right on top of the ones over there that I quasi buried. Okay. I'm just trying to get enough to where the skimmed over part should take to the dirt. Maybe not. Let's see. I've that like 50 times in this video. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> And if this fall harvest from a hot season planted potato comes in half as well as our other one did, 
we will have learned something for next year. Because you can do everything you see on the internet and it still not work because your garden is slightly different. Or the rains weren't enough. Or you didn't have enough fish emulsion. Or whatever. And actually, speaking of fish emulsion, we realized a little, well not, not too late. We knew how important it was. I did, I just didn't have enough. We did not prioritize it because we didn't know where you could get fish for inexpensive to free. We asked friends. I even have a buddy with a charter business that I tried to rope in. And almost by happenstance, one of our neighbors invited us to go fishing at a public area right down the road, which in country terms means literally the county line. <laughs> <laughs> just across the street. Just across the street. Seven and a half miles away on the border. Anyways. So we actually went and got a fishing license after we saw how much success they were having. And we've got, what, 15 fish in a barrel right now? Yeah. So we will have fish emulsion. It doesn't do any good to kill yourself doing three quarters of something to be successful if it won't make you successful the rest of the way. So we realized that we needed a weekly application of fish emulsion. I gave a dose to my uh, my plants that were struggling with squash bugs, that and soapy water. Yeah. And almost the next day, everything looked much happier. Yep. So it's, it really saved the crop. I think it did. So I don't know what may or may not be missing from your ground. It might have nothing to do with fish emulsion. It might have nothing to do with hard ground. It might have to do with potato beetles. Not enough water. Too much water. Not enough sun. Too much sun. Too much sun. Too hot. Too cold. One of the beautifully frustrating things about planting. Could be, could be almost anything that's wrong. So anyhow. Troubleshoot. Yeah. And when you get a harvest that is a certain way, I don't even know if you can see me. Hello, hello, Keith. Cowboy, this hair's for you. Uh, when you see what goes wrong, typically there's some Yahoo on the internet that says, I had trouble with my potatoes like this. And they'll tell you more than likely what your problem is. And we did some of that investigating too. And we found out that the fish emulsion actually is like a pesticide in and of itself. It helps the plant recover quicker and gets rid of it. So. Who knows? It's almost like uh, an Im immune system booster for the plant. It's ginkgo biloba for your plant. Echinacea. Echinacea. St. John's wort. <laughs> mm, healing crystals and positive energy. Wait, that's, nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in science. Well, we should probably unload the rest of the straw and just put it over here. Okay. So it's here. Okay. And then hope for the best. And hope for the best. But that's boring, unloading straw. So we're not going to show it to you. Although if you stay tuned past this part, Professor Pending, there will be more just for you specifically. So thanks for joining us today. I hope you like this video. Then I hope you actually hit the button and like the video. And even if you don't like the video, I hope you actually hit the button and like the video. It's not immoral to hit the like button even if you don't like it. It's because it, it, it please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Grow as you grow. We'll see you next time. Yeah. Okay, do so you want to put that in the middle so that we both can pull from it? Or? Oh, go for it, yeah. Take, take taters. Take taters. Please. Taters! What's taters? Somebody at church. Oh, it was a... Uh... Conrad said he identifies with the Irish thing and starving. <laughs> Not knowing is part of the fun until you don't harvest anything. <laughs> until you're digging in concrete. Where? Rotting useless. Yep. Some good rains on it. Yep, yep. Thank you, farmer friend. 
Not you. <laughs> You're the farmer's daughter. Shade, yeah, cast from these trees, yeah, might help it be a little cooler, maybe trick it into growing. We'll see. Thunder all the time now. Yeah. On the horizon because it's so hot. I mean, we got four good rows. Yeah, no, it's good. I think we'll be okay. It's good. And plant them close. And cover them with hay. Yep. Pigs are like, is that for me? I know. <laughs> Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. You want it on the edge, too? Well, this is the other side of this hill, that's all. So we've already got the other ones done. Okay. So we can, we're going to need more probably after a week or two when they start sprouting through. Oh, we still have that pile. It's not rotting like this because it's covered in nope. the barn. But that would be enough to get them. Okay. Hopefully get the potatoes growing. Let's we'll see. So I'm just barely covering the potatoes with some of this good dirt that the chickens ran through. Do you have them all on Nope, here? I just stopped right there. These reds seem to have given me eyes before the yellow ones did. The reds did? Yeah. All right. So, mostly those in. Rodney's domain. Uh huh. It's Rodney's yes. domain. He's claimed the pigs. He's the survivor. Lone survivor. He's the front pasture king. Well, I mean, he did outlive everybody else. <laughs> I think this is the end of our outside stuff today. Yes. <laughs> it's all the outside stuff that's roasting, huh? A zillion degrees. At least there's a breeze. There's a breeze. I didn't check the cow's water. The pigs are getting low. I checked the cow's water yesterday evening. They were okay. Okay. Chickens up front are getting low as well. All right. Or out back. Which way is front? Just out back. All of our works in our front yard. <laughs> yeah. It's an idiot to talk about.
Of course, I also don't want the house to No, I don't. I used a metal grinder on the ground. <laughs> I laid out everything. Use this. Laid out, laid them all out, and set in a row, and then used each one. I even have Gunner's BB gun over here. <laughs> and I'm gonna use Courtney's little bang bang edit that she found. The dynamite and threw the fireworks in there. Yeah, I heard the fireworks. the rest of the hay. I forgot to get cash for, oh, yeah. for feed. It'll be alright. We gone three days. I know. Okay. It'll be alright. Is it a plant? Yeah. Hey, Professor, want to see a plant? I think you filmed this already. I may have, but this doesn't really count. <gasps> is that the pumpkin yeah. or is it a squash? I think it actually might be butternut. Look at this thing all the way over here. Yeah. Is that the same plant? Either it's another one. That's either cucumber or cantaloupe. Look I'm at not this sure. thing. Tomatoes. <gasps> <laughs> Gifts from our last set of pigs. Yeah, so if you guys remember. Sorry. There's no guys. There's only, only Professor Pending still here. This was the pig pen. The last place that our five pigs existed on this planet and we used to feed them all kinds of just whatever rubbish we had lying around and they ate it and by golly we have some volunteers look at the size of the leaf it looks better than like anything See, we have anywhere else here this look at the shape of that it looks like oh like and it, it's broken off but it looks like it will be butternut oh, i hope we don't look I hope we don't lose them. yeah that's a good one Cool. Yeah, let me see the tomatoes on there. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's more tomatoes growing down in the back corner where they used to wait for us to come down. This is the beauty of just interspersing everything and growing where you had animals and having animals where you grow and feeding them slop. And sometimes, for no additional effort, you get some little little rewards. I guess that's cucumber. I see those flowers look different. They look like cucumber. That's funny. Alright. We'll see you next time, Professor.